Hello and welcome to this edition of White Pack CityCast. I'm Randy Beeler. At its October 18th business meeting, the Yakima City Council adopted a resolution that will result in the closure of a homeless encampment located near the 3rd Street and Walnut Street intersection by the middle of November. The encampment was established in July in a city-owned parking lot following the closure of an unauthorized encampment that had developed along Chestnut Street between 6th Street and 7th Street earlier this year. The city has already provided notice to people living at the encampment that it would be closed by mid-November. With its October 18th decision, the council established a formal date for the closure of November 18th. The closure of the encampment is expected to coincide with the opening of several winter weather shelters, which are typically hosted by local churches. Some of the people who previously lived at the encampment have been placed in housing through a program run by Yakima Neighborhood Health Services. Efforts also continue to develop sustainable strategies to address homelessness in Yakima. The city is working together with local area homeless service providers and the Yakima Valley Conference of Governments, which administers state and federal funding for homeless programs, to create a coordinated approach to addressing homelessness now and in the future. The Yakima City Council will conduct a series of study sessions throughout the month of November to review the proposed 2017 City of Yakima budget. The council will also conduct two public hearings related to the proposed 2017 city budget in November and another one in December. The budget study sessions are scheduled for 9 a.m. to noon on Tuesday, November 1st, Thursday, November 3rd, Tuesday, November 8th, Thursday, November 10th, and Tuesday, November 29th. Public hearings regarding the proposed 2017 budget and the proposed amount of property tax revenue to be collected next year will take place during the Council's Tuesday, November 15th business meeting and will begin at or near 6.30 p.m. A second public hearing on the proposed budget will take place at the Council's Tuesday, December 6th business meeting and will begin at or near 6.30 p.m. Final adoption of the 2017 city budget is scheduled to take place during the Council's Tuesday, December 13th business meeting, which will begin at 2 p.m. All of the study sessions regarding the proposed budget will take place in the Council Chambers at Yakima City Hall and will be aired live and replayed on YPAC Charter Cable Channel 194. A nearly forgotten city park is being rejuvenated thanks to local business owners and the city is getting a new communications tower thanks to the needs of the private sector. With those stories, here's CityCast's Ken Crockett. Thank you, Randy. Big improvements are planned for a small city park thanks to the generosity of a local developer and a building contractor. Hogback Development and Stevens & Sons Construction have teamed up to upgrade Rosalama Garden Club Park. The park is located at the southeast corner of the intersection of 16th Avenue and Tyaton Drive. Yakima Valley trolley tracks once ran through the park, but have long since been removed. There is a nearby Yakima transit stop on Tyaton Drive, but the park sees little activity. The improvements are designed to make the corner more attractive and include new landscaping, concrete pathway pavers, additional sod and benches. All of the materials and labor for the improvements are being donated as a gift to the community. Construction is underway on a new public safety communication tower to provide improved reliability for police and fire radio communications in the city of Yakima. Coming down is a 26-year-old tower that had reached its load capacity at Lookout Point, which is located on a hillside ridge between Sela and Yakima. The new 100-foot high tower meets the latest requirements and will be able to handle additional enhancement needs in the future. The entire cost of the tower is being funded by New Singular Wireless, which leases space on the tower from the city for cell phone service. The cost of the new tower is more than $200,000, but with the agreement reached with Singular Wireless, the city will only pay approximately $114,000 and take immediate ownership. Under terms of the lease agreement, Singular Wireless will receive a monthly rent offset until the cost of the new tower is recovered. The old tower will be dismantled and put into storage for possible future use. Back to you, Randy. Thank you, Ken. When we come back, CityCast Sean Davido will let you know about a unique arts event coming to Yakima. You're watching YPAX CityCast.
My name is Jack Kurtzinger, and I coach grid kid football, and I teach self-defense. My name's Ryan Pepper, and I coach youth basketball. I'm Jim Moore, and I'm a certified EMT. I'm Elaine Gonzalez, and I'm a police chaplain. What do we have in common? We're all a part of your Yakima Police Department. Be, Be part, part of the solution. solution. The Yakima Fire Department wants to remind you as temperatures drop to keep space heaters at least three feet away from other objects. In a matter of minutes, space heaters can turn your home into a house fire. Stay warm and safe this winter and be part of the solution. Over the last few years, the Yakima area music scene has been on the rise. Now, Yakima may be on the verge of becoming known for another art form. To tell you more, here's CityCast's Sean Davido. Thanks, Randy. I'm here at the Yakima Valley Museum, which is playing host to a new event that organizers hope will grow like some of the other types of festivals that have certainly caught on in our area. The event is the Sagebrush Hills Film Festival that will feature five international films over three days here at the museum. The events will take place on November 11th through 13th and will expose attendees to some of the quality international film work being offered today. Now I'm here with the organizers of the Sagebrush Hills Film Festival, Clayton and Sue. Now Sue, where did you get the idea for the festival? Um, actually, I've had an idea for a film festival for quite a long time, but to do it in Yakima, uh, the point I guess was that we wanted to create an event that could cause people to come together, regardless of background, regardless of um, ethnicity or socioeconomic status, and kind of just have a dialogue and uh, everybody loves watching movies right. and so when you watch it together you have something to talk about and it's an instant connection that you might not get anywhere else right. doing anything else. Exactly. Now Clayton, you're part of this, you kind of rooked you into it. Um, there's, there's different themes, there's three days, now what's the difference between each day? Yeah, so each day has its own individual focus. So Friday night we're kicking off with a big red carpet party, yeah. uh, one, one feature film on Friday night. Big party. Yeah, big, big party. party. Uh, we got uh, local wines. Um, got crafted gastropo we'll be doing some catering now will people they'll have the red carpet they can walk up red carpet yeah we're going to have a the red carpet here. was the yeah. first thing we spent money on it was the absolute must but the step and repeat is something that i think is a really cool addition that um, nobody that i'm aware of has done in yakima before so people really get a chance to be like celebrity in front of the big backdrop and get their photos taken so as they're walking it yeah day two is full day two of? is more of a uh, thought-provoking more um, intellectual type of films. I mean, not not too obscure. Not too but, deep, not that's, too... Yeah, the, the idea is to uh, promote conversation a little more heavily. And both Friday night and Saturday, the films will, uh, will have speakers to talk about the films and to kind of tie the films to life here in Yakima to, to kind of flesh out what's relevant about this film, mm -hmm. what makes it relevant to life in Yakima. Very cool. Very um, cool. And then Sunday, Sunday is our family day. Sunday is uh, free to the public. All right, Come free is always good, right? I know, it's actually thanks to Memorial Hospital because they came in with a last minute sponsorship to make Sunday completely free. And that was the point for their sponsorship. And it's we're really grateful for that. And it's more of a family oriented day. It is, oh, yeah. yeah. We're showing two feature films. One of them is an animated film. We're going to be showing it uh, on two screens, one in Spanish and one in English. And then a second Dutch children's film which is, it's not animated, it's live action in Dutch with subtitles with a great message for kids. Yeah. And in between the films will be a, an educational activity for the kids to participate yeah. in. Now these aren't your average Hollywood films that you're gonna see in the theaters, right? What do these bring to the table that those films wouldn't? Um, well, we spent a month screening 34 films and we selected these five specifically because we felt that they were engaging and exciting without being too Hollywood, but also not obscure so that they're so art housey people can't really relate to the film can't or understand them. Yeah, I mean there are, there are some really far out there films which are amazing, but you know. And uh, we picked these five because we could see how the message and the themes and the topics that are kind of seen throughout the films could really tie in and become relevant to our community. And that was one of the criteria when we screened the films, is how is it relevant to our community? Because you can't have a dialogue about something that doesn't mean anything to you. Right, exactly. So, sounds like a great fun uh, weekend event. Um, how can people find out more information? 
Yep. Go to our website, sagebrushfilms.com, and check us out on Facebook. We've got uh, frequent updates on <laughs> Facebook. You can find out more information about the different days, the events of, the, of each day. And uh, the schedule is on our website, ticket sales on our website. Uh, film trailers on our website. You're right. You've got everything there, so check out www.sagebrushfilms.com and they can find out all the information. Yep. So, Randy, grab some popcorn, head out to the museum, and we'll send it back to you in the studio. Thank you, Sean, and thank you, too, for joining us for this edition of White Pack CityCast. You can stay up to date with events, activities, and more involving the city of Yakima by accessing the multiple communications platforms provided by the city. On the City of Yakima website at yakimawa.gov, you'll find unedited coverage of public meetings held by the City Council, the Yakima Planning Commission, various other boards, committees, and commissions. The website also provides information about each and every city division and department. The City's Facebook page links you to details about meeting agendas, entertainment activities, and more. And the City's Twitter page is the ideal way to learn about what's going on with the City of Yakima while you're on the go. Visit the City of Yakima website, find us on Facebook, or follow the city on Twitter. We'll see you on the next edition of YPAC CityCast. I'm Randy Beeler. Take care. For more information on YPAC CityCast, Call 575-6092.